Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop, your weekly podcast all about Photoshop, available in high def. Today, we're going to talk about my favorite subject, which is blending modes, and I'm going to sort of scratch the surface of what can be done with them. All the pros know that blending modes absolutely rock. When you know how to use blending modes, a whole new world is opened up to you, whether it be a greater selection of filter commands through compositing and color correction tasks. Knowing how blending modes work really help you get the job done. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. In this first example, I'm going to use blending modes to lighten up a picture. Now here's a relatively dark photo. It's of a doorway in a church. And what I want to do is use a blending mode to help sort of these details pop a bit. Let's simply right click on this and duplicate the layer. And we're going to set that top copy to screen mode. And you'll see that everything lightens up quite a bit. Now we do have some noise at the edges, but it still did a nice job of opening that scene up. And we can lower the opacity to taste. Here it is without and with. Now that was just one blending mode used for a quick, very simple purpose. And that was to use the screen mode, which took the copied image on top of itself and said, automatically show the layer through. Leave the brighter pixels here and drop everything that's darker on the underlying layer. Every blending mode that you see in this list has lots of different purposes. Multiply will make things darker. Here's how you make sense of it. You have your first category here under darken, and each of these will darken the image by combining the darker values. The next category creates lighter versions of the image, and depending which one you pick, you'll see different results. Color Dodge there did a nice result. Overlay takes the two layers and mixes them together using different modes. Difference creates a negative image, and this last category works on values like color and luminosity. Let's go here with Color Dodge, and that did a nice job. Now, if I wanted to tint this image, there's an easy way to do it. We can go ahead and add a new solid color layer, and let's pick a color like this nice sort of burnt orange, and then we'll just change that to Hue, and it tints the layer down below. If we want that colorization effect to be stronger, I would choose Color, and it does a much stronger tint. And that's just a simple way of using blending modes. There's much more to it, but you see this quickly gets the job done. Let's go ahead and close this and go to our next image. And I want to combine some textures here to create an aged photo. Let's go to our Actions panel for a second. And I am going to load in the Textures action. Let's go ahead and make sure this image is in 8-bit mode so we have full support for all of our filters. And we're going to grab the stucco filter here and click play. And it's going to create a new texture for us. That worked pretty well. And let's blend that. And notice as we start to blend it how that mixes the texture with the layer below. Now let's toss that texture and try a new one here. Let's go ahead and try this asphalt. And I'll click play and it'll make a new texture that looks like pavement. That did a good job. Let's go ahead and merge those two layers together. And let's just blend that. And you see as we start to mix that how it does a pretty good job of mixing that texture. We could of course lighten that a little bit. And that looks pretty good there. And I like how that's working. Now you see there's all these different blending modes here. And which one you pick will give you different results. But here's a cool shortcut. You don't have to sit there clicking and trying them all out. Just pick the Move tool and then use the keyboard shortcut of Shift Plus or Shift Minus. Shift Plus will step you through that list one at a time so you can see the results of mixing the layers together. And if you see one that you like and you go past it, just press Shift Minus to go backwards through the list. And this is a great way to introduce texture to your images if you want to make them look like they're on a canvas or mix it all together. Plus, this opens up a whole new world of compositing techniques to mix multiple photos together. Let's take a look at one last example. And you see here we have a composited image comprised of several photos shot at night. Here's the first image, shot from the passenger seat of a moving car. I do not recommend trying to take pictures while actually driving a car. Next, I took another photo and mixed it in. Now, let's set this to normal mode for a second 
and you see as we played with these different lighten modes that it mixes nicely. Shift plus will step us through and you see it does a different job depending which mode you pick. I liked how linear dodge worked there. And we just add it up. Here's screen mode, here's another in lighten mode, and lastly here's one on top in linear dodge. And I could lower that opacity just a little bit. Now this is just an example of a collaged image, but it shows you how those blending modes can be used to create composite images as well. All in all, blend modes are absolutely awesome. You may just be grasping the potential here, but as you start to see them throughout the rest of our lessons, you'll really come to appreciate just how powerful and flexible they are. Be sure to join us next week when we take a look at blend modes and filters to see how we combine two great Photoshop technologies to get even more powerful results. My name is Rich Harrington, thank you for joining us, and be sure to check out our resource blog over at rastervector.com.